There's a real burden when you know something and go out on the internet and try to find answers. It's a frustration that I'm going to help you solve here. Hey, this is Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations. When you know a topic and you go out on the internet, this is a an exercise I ask people to do all the time. Go look for an answer you already know. Okay? So if you are a subject matter expert in statistics and you go out into the general search engine and you look for how a certain function works in statistics, you'll, you'll likely find it because uh, functions and mathematics and things like that, you'll find some educational site that will go over it. But when you start looking into the application of the statistical model or the use of a, of a certain type of theorem, You'll start finding more and more abstract differences, even more if you start looking at um, that application in the economy. So it's kind of like a funnel. As it gets applied to a larger population, you'll have more and more people who chime in with their opinion of what should be done and what shouldn't be done. This is a challenge that gets in the way of a novice person's ability to find good answers. So understand me, I'm saying you as a subject matter expert, look up in your subject area. Now, if you're in one of these industries that pays really well, and there's not that many people out there doing it, and there's a bunch of certifications out there, you'll often find a lot of just complete garbage. You know, you know, it's garbage, though, because your perspective is practitioner, your perspective is subject matter expert. Um, You know, whether it's investing, whether it's economics, whether it's political, whether it is uh, application of a method or a system of doing things, again, you'll find garbage, but someone who has no insight or knowledge in that topic, guess what they find? They find an unending list of wonderful ideas and concepts. There are books today out in the marketplace that talk about things that are just completely ridiculous. I'm not going to name anything in particular for fear of uh, offending the well-informed. So here's what I mean by this. If you want answers to the tough questions you have, there is a methodology for getting answers. And it is more of a research methodology than a casual go online and look up some stuff. In fact, you may even hire a researcher to go out and look for answers doing what's called a meta study. So you're looking for a solution. How do I do X? You have somebody go out and you find a, do a meta study and they get you five videos that tell you how to do X or five articles or, or a combination thereof. Then you go through and you look at the commonalities. Now you might be saying, well, Justin, this seems like a lot of work already. Well, it doesn't get any harder than this. When you see the five commonalities, now you focus on the five. See, you didn't go out on the internet and find a hundred responses to your search. You didn't look at 12 videos and waste half an afternoon. You simply had your assistant go out and find you five sources. Here's the question. Here's the problem I'm trying to solve. Here's what the outcome will look like. Go find me some answers. They go out and bring you back five answers. Now, they're novices, and they might bring back things that are kind of abstract. But what's going on is they're narrowing your focus so that now you look at the three to five things. Now you can ask a new question, and you can move forward. You also want to be looking for action-oriented answers that you can implement as a means of testing the concept and whether or not it's worth your time or effort. This is very important stuff here because see, if you're a high-income professional, you're making $50,000, $150,000 an hour. Or not $150,000 a year, not $150,000 an hour. If you're making $150,000 an hour, you shouldn't be listening to my podcast. You should just hire me to do the work for you. And then you could just tell me what you want and I'll go do it. See, there's a scaling where the value of your time increases. The common tools that everybody's taught to use, the value of those tools decrease. YouTube is a great source of education. Yes, if you're uneducated. But if you're highly knowledgeable sitting on YouTube, your time could be better spent going to a library. Or having your research assistant look into it and get you back some responses. There's an element of a delegation here. There's an element of of sifting down the information. Uh, Another good approach is if you want to solve a complex problem, you go buy the five books on that topic. You get the five books, you read those books. That's it. You You just brought five experts into your office. You take the time to read those books. You give yourself a, uh, give yourself a couple days. 
Now, if you only have a couple days to read five books, you've got to figure out a way to to get from those books as fast as possible the answers you need to move to the next step. So you write on top of a piece of paper the objective or the outcome you desire and then a list of questions you have about achieving that outcome. Now you're not just reading every page of the book. You're going in there and you're reading the specific chapters that are relevant to your topic. You're going through and highlighting and indexing. You're going to uh, to drill down in those books more focused. I think the theme really is is how to get focused finding answers rather than searching with new questions. And, and one thing about the internet is a lot of the stuff there is advertising. Now, you can go get those five books from the library. You don't have to buy them from Amazon necessarily. You could get five book summaries to see if those books are in the right direction. You can also ask yourself, is this outcome worth the time and investment it might take? Now, granted, what I'm describing here sounds like it could take months to figure out something. So you're not going to use it on simple activities with low outputs. See, if you want to be highly influential, if you want to gain power in a marketplace, if you want to have the achievements in life, you can't be stepping over dollars to pick up dimes. You need to focus on the dollar activity, the $10 activity, the $1,000 activity. Now, the rest of these activities you can choose not to do, or you can have someone else do them for you. But ultimately, it's about focus. So when you need answers and you don't readily know a method to approach it. So if you're a subject matter expert, you're not going to be researching your area of expertise because somebody could just come to you and ask you a question and you could just give them an answer. You know, like these things are already in your system. They're already in your behavior. They're already in your activities. The exercise of going online and looking up in your area is just to prove to you how much garbage is available when there's near zero barrier of entry to get content in front of the masses. Now, one thing that's interesting about my content is I'm, I'm not really trying to attract people. I primarily document these things in the podcast so they can be transcribed and I can later put them in books, reports, and materials for clients. See, I'm not trying to get a big giant audience of followers and people asking me questions all the time because me answering questions directly is not productive unless the individuals have gone through a number of steps and I made it hard for them to ask me a question and then those people answer their questions because they've thought about it. See, if you could just tweet back and say, hey, Justin, I've got a question about how I could be more effective online, how I could answer more questions, how I could achieve more meaningful and and powerful outcomes, and that's your Twitter response, and I write back on Twitter, I haven't given you enough to move forward. Now, I could point you to a resource, and that resource will say, go get five books on the topic, read through the books based on uh, your outcome and a list of questions, look at the commonalities between all of the findings, and then create an action plan. I could tell you that all day, but if you don't get it in the context of value or the context of application, then you'll never use it. And then it's just me talking to myself. Or me answering and thinking I'm doing something as a business from realizing I'm not actually engaged with a client. So there's two things I want you to take away. The first thing is you must own your time, focus, and attention. So I thank you very much for if you're investing time and focus and attention on doing and listening to this program because my objective is, is, is the second goal here is to focus that time and attention on large outcomes worth the investment. So you might need to build up your reason why. My kid will come in and ask me a question about something. And some of these things are, are, are important. So we're working on a project and we're talking about Uh, Mars. So his school was doing a Mars project. And we talked about on Mars how there's no oxygen. And I said, is there really no oxygen on Mars? Well, there's no breathable air on Mars. But there is oxygen on Mars because Mars, the planet, has iron oxide on it. And iron oxide is iron and oxygen put together. It also has a bunch of other chemicals. But he, he was asking questions about, well, how do I get oxygen on Mars? And I said, well, do you want to take it with you? Or do you want it to create it when you're there? He's like, well, what do you mean, create it when you're there? I said, well, there was this moon project, and they were actually going to create oxygen from moon dust because 
elemental oxygen could be separated from the environment. Mars has a lot of carbon dioxide, ferrous oxide, chemical reactions, blah, blah, blah. Well, of course, this is way over a kid's head. But the elements, he, he had thought about it. You know, he's thinking about it. He, the elements, he says, well, what if we could just make oxygen on Mars? So he said, well, how do I find out if we could make oxygen on Mars? Now, by now, we're way tangent off his original project, but he's interested. I'm excited that my kid's interested in science. I said, look, here's what we're going to do. We're going to look up uh, from authoritative sources how to make oxygen, period. Okay, that's the generic. How to make oxygen, how to make breathable air. Okay, submarines make breathable air through a certain method. And, uh, you know, by the way, I know a lot more about this topic now than when we started because really I didn't have an answer, a ready answer for them. But basically, submarines make oxygen out of uh, burning materials. Uh, there's some oxygen that can be made by chemical reactions. There's a bunch of different ways to make oxygen. And one of the ways it includes chemical reactions with iron oxide to, and uh, different kind of calcium uh, carbonate and different things to separate. It turns out Mars has got all this stuff up there. And if you had the right equipment, you could make a limited supply of oxygen on Mars, breathable air. Here's my point. So he, we, we narrowed down th- three to four authoritative sources. We found out there's this moon project, blah, blah, blah. And I encouraged him to reach out to the scientists to ask his specific questions. Because there was a point where he got the information he needed for his original objective, but he just kept on going. And so I couldn't answer anymore. I said, look, I can sit down with you. We can search the internet for the next 40 years. Are you going to use this information? He says, well, it's interesting. I'd like to look into it more. I said, great. Contact the scientists that are working on this. And he says, well, what do you mean? I said, well, if you're really going to do something with this information, I don't want to sound like a demotivating dad, but but really, if he's going to do something with it, let's build an oxygen generator that you could take to Mars and have somebody test it. It wouldn't be the first time a kid invented something that NASA was willing to test. And of course, now with the commercial market, SpaceX is willing to test all this other stuff. So I say to him, I say, look, are you going to do something with this? Because he just had more questions than he had answers. And I was running out of answers. And it really, it's, it's, taken, a, it's taken a while. And he says, well, well, yes. I said, okay, then your next step is to reach out to the scientists involved in these projects. Write them a letter. Tell them about your school project. Tell them about this interesting idea. Because we actually even uh, wrote out the chemical formulas and what was necessary to turn the materials that are already on Mars into breathable air. And we already knew that submarines did this and that uh, actually on the spacecraft, the the space station, they have this going on there. And we found a number of formulas and I said, look, son, if this is something you want to do, you got to reach out to the scientists and let them know you're interested. Now, this comes from my experience back when I was younger. I actually designed a a computing system using a Plan 9 operating system. I contacted AT&T. It led to interviews at AT AT&T. It led to interviews at Texas Instruments. And it was a a great opportunity and learning experience for me. Now, did I get rich off of something? No. Was I expecting my kid to get rich off of something? Maybe. But my point being is he didn't have enough desire to sit down and write to a couple scientists to say, hey, here's what I've worked up. Is this even possible? Yeah, I'm interested in more information. See, you've got to decide. I, and I'm not saying my kid's a disappointment. I'm just saying, you know, he's he didn't have the passion and interest. Now, if there's something in your life that has passion and interest, after you've narrowed down the sources or had somebody narrow down the sources for you, after you've answered your list of questions that drive you towards the outcome that you're looking for and you've already determined that that outcome is big enough to be worth invested in, because it's okay for after you get the the basic answers to say it's not something you want to move forward with, um, the, the moving forward is contacting an expert in your area. It could be one of the authors of the books that you've read. It could be an organization mentioned in these books or resources. You reach out to them with a, a letter of inquiry to just make a connection. Now, others I know have done this and ended up with great career positions. Um, they've presented ideas and concepts and, and, and actually spoke to trade organizations. And a number of uh, uh, occasions, I've gotten consulting assignments by just raising a, a, an interesting flag. Um, but my point is, is once you've got that outcome worth achieving 
and you've got the information that you need. Don't sit with it on your own. You've got to reach out to someone else, reach out to someone who can take action or make real your specific findings. And that's how we transform into power. Just knowing the answer to things doesn't deliver the outcomes that you're looking for. Now, if you're just learning how to use a screwdriver or try to fix a fan in your house or something and you really want to, yeah, YouTube's going to answer it for you pretty quick and you're going to be done. But even then, you don't get one thing back in search results. And if you're there 20, 30, three hours later and you still haven't fixed the fan, then you're stuck. Do you understand where I'm coming from? It's about getting to an answer that you can take action on as quickly as possible Focusing the majority of your time on the implementation and the action and then taking it to the next level by getting in front of a service provider, getting in front of a, an, an expert, getting in front of an audience who can transfer your knowledge into income. And then that's how you move forward, turning business relationships into profits guaranteed. I'm Justin Hit with Inside Strategic Relations, and this has been about not just knowing things, but transforming that knowledge into the outcomes you desire. Thanks for listening.